there are three things Canadians love to hate. Banks, airlines, and insanely high cell phone plans. And with reason too, we pay some of the highest prices in the developed world for wireless phone plans. But what if super fast internet that's cheap and affordable is possible? Sounds too good to be true? Well, a bunch of New Yorkers are trying to make this their reality, guerrilla style. Laura Tribe, executive director of the consumer watchdog group Open Media, joins us to discuss if this could be a possibility in Canada as well. I want to start with where we're at here in a lay of the land. Uh, it was back in March. The CRTC promised that we were going to get access to cheaper data-only plans. Did they deliver? It, it sounds like they sure have. Uh, no, they haven't delivered. So we're still waiting to see the results of what those data-only plans will look like in Canada. Uh, but the signs we've seen from the telecoms that were asked to submit is that they're pretty bad. Uh, they're up to, you know, one twentieth of what we can already get in our cell phone plans, something like $30 for 500 megs. Uh, so I think unless the CRTC really steps in, there's going to be a real long road ahead for us to start to see lower cell phone prices in Canada. And Laura, is the core problem there simply that the, the telcos can get away with it? So long as, you know, we don't have many options, they don't have to give us many options, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think we've seen a lot of uh, talking points from the government and from the CRTC that they're really looking for facilities-based competition. Essentially, you have to build the towers yourself uh, to be able to compete. And I think that's really where it raises a challenge in Canada because it's really expensive to duplicate all of the infrastructure that's already been built. Uh, and with such a small handful of providers, there's really no incentive for them to be competing against each other on prices. So until we start to see new providers entering the market, I don't think we're gonna see much of a shakeup. Now, we do have Technologically speaking, we do have options. And my colleague Steve D'Souza wrote a great piece out of New York this week talking about these so-called mesh networks. And in that, they sort of bypass the ISP and they go to the source and get their own internet from them and then broadcast it via antenna to very specific neighborhoods, sometimes just a very specific building itself. It, it promises enormously fast speeds. The cost is through the floor compared to certainly what we're paying here. And in New York, it's hit, uh, you know, it's in three major neighborhoods. Neighborhoods, Chinatown, uh, Brooklyn, and uh, and I think the East Village as well. It, is something like that a possibility here in Canada? Definitely, it's a possibility. And you know, we've seen mesh networks put forward before in Vancouver and Toronto, and they're a real possibility and something that when people come together, they can build to try and circumvent these ISPs. So I think it's really exciting to see these ideas of how do we work around the challenges that we have in the marketplace right now. How do we recognize that we just need to find ways to connect to the internet and if the companies that are supposed to be serving us aren't, maybe we can do it ourselves. Uh, so I think there's a lot of potential for these types of uh, communities and networks, even if there are some limitations. What, what are those limitations though? Because it, 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 the way I read it, it's really simple. They get their own sort of pipe, they put an antenna on the roof and they broadcast it to where they want it to go and everybody gets access. You know, they have smaller antennas once it gets to the specific area they want it. it is, is there something preventing com companies from doing that? And what, what are the obstacles? Because I think a lot of people would want to sign up tomorrow if they could. Uh, yeah, no, I definitely think so, and I think it really fits in with these data plans that we're looking for. Um, I think some of the obstacles I'm referring to are it's Wi-Fi based. So this is not cell networks. This is not getting access to your phone and text messages. This is looking for things like data. Uh, so unless it's a database service, you might actually run into some limitations. Um, additionally, you know, as you build out these networks, they only travel as far as the network is built. And so until it really expands to your entire commute to and from work uh, or something like that, you're still going to need to be relying on other providers in the meantime and to kind of patch it up uh, those extra areas. So the limitations are more around geography and the type of service, but what's stopping us from doing it? Uh, not much. Uh, and once you start to build it, it's, you know, it's been described as a spider web. So once you start to build yeah. that web, it can grow pretty quick. Would you be able to patch something together for, I mean, we're looking at New York where it's got 154 main locations, three solid neighborhoods where it's covered, that you, know, that you could have enough of a plan that you wouldn't need that you know, sort of cell phone plan anymore. You could rely, I, I get you can't do it just yet, but do you think we're far from the point where you might be able to rely solely on something like that? I think the thing that's really exciting about this type of project is that it really helps people understand that we're not tied to the ISPs that we have. There are certain limitations, uh, but I think that until you know, right now, the limitations I was addressing earlier, until we see the CRTC actually change the restrictions so that it's not facilities-based competition, but anyone can access that cell phone infrastructure, 
yeah, we're going to see a lot of momentum on these types of projects as people try and find things that they can build themselves because we're clearly frustrated, as you said, our high cell phone prices are one of the favorite things Canadians get to complain about. Uh, and I think that when we start to see these projects take off, it's amazing how quickly they can snowball and the momentum they can actually gain when people start to see that it, it really does work. And what is your level of confidence in this particular uh, iteration of the CRTC that they would do something like that? I mean, I think that what we heard in the last decision is that the CRTC really doesn't feel that the scope of the proceeding they were undertaking uh, gave them that direction. But I think that until we actually see a shift from Minister Baines, a shift from the government that makes quite clear that we do need to look beyond facilities-based competition and actually prioritize customers uh, and Canadians and put them first and make sure that affordability and access are really the priorities, not the telecom companies themselves, um, I think it's going to be a long road. So I really am hopeful that you know the minister is listening and paying attention as these concerns keep popping up and that really we can continue to push the ministry and the CRTC forward to make sure that affordability really is an issue that gets addressed. Customers first, radical solutions. Laura Tribe, <laughs> great to see you. Thanks for this. Thanks so much. Laura Tribe, the executive director of Open Media.